Hey everybody. I still think it's weird that I have children. When did I become that much of an adult? When did I become a responsible adult enough to be somebody's parent? Hmm. To somebody's. Like, it still feels strange to say my daughter or my son for some reason. On one hand, it's like, how am I someone's mum? On the other hand, when I'm with them, it just feels like the most natural, normal, comfortable thing ever. Like, yeah, this is my baby. Anyway, I always like to hear other women's birth and labour stories as they are always unique and it's a special amazing thing so I thought I would share mine. My half-sister also just had a baby. Her story is completely different and as usual a good deal more peaceful than mine. Mm. Fair. So I've just had my second baby. Holy fuck. I suddenly have two children. Holy fuck. With my dear firstborn girl, Severine, I had to be induced early due to pre-eclampsia, which was an horrendous experience with pain beyond description or imagining, which I never wanted to repeat as long as I live, so help me God. So you can imagine how it felt sitting in the hospital a few weeks ago being handed literature on induction. <laughs> if you don't know what induction is, induction of labor, it basically means they use medication or other methods to force the baby out. It's often done if continuing the pregnancy poses a danger to the baby or the mother. This time around I didn't get preeclampsia, but I did get gestational diabetes. Lucky me. I spent most of my pregnancy in Scotland where I got seriously well cared for. Like I think I love the NHS. Here in New Zealand they test every pregnant woman for gestational diabetes but over there in the UK they only test if they think you're at risk. And I was all good until a scan around Halloween time where they said that my baby was in the 98th percentile, in other words, massive. So I did a glucose tolerance test and boom, diabetes. Gestational diabetes is like temporary type 2 diabetes by the way. Immediately I started a special strict diet which I absolutely hated and pricking my finger four times a day to test the blood sugar. Fast forward a few weeks I'm back in New Zealand two more scans have confirmed my giant fat baby and the risks of the baby getting stuck in the birth canal, his shoulder dislocating, need for a c-section, episiotomy etc are all being explained to me. I'm now pricking my finger six times a day and giving myself four insulin injections every day and it seems that regardless of what I eat my blood sugar is just out of control. When we came back from Scotland, before we found a place to live, we stayed for a couple of weeks at my dad's on his farm. And while there, a tummy bug was doing the rounds. I got it and being pregnant was the worst affected by it. And one day I just vomited up everything I ate or drank all day, which apparently irritated my uterus. 2am after many hours of lying in bed and wondering if what I'm feeling are contractions. I realised that they are contractions and decided to go to the hospital. So they admit me, do a bunch of unpleasant and painful tests, declare that they are real contractions but don't seem to be gaining in intensity. I was only 35 weeks at this point and nurse came in to prep us about the NICU stay that our premature baby was about to have. Fortunately, 24 hours later the contraction stopped and I was able to go home. Unfortunately, I spent the next few weeks with non-stop Braxton Hicks contractions, which are kind of like mini ones that feel a bit like you're doing sit-ups all the time. So I'm feeling half dead, extremely sore and annoyed at having to stick needles into my body 10 times a day and I'm being promised a baby that's going to be at least 10 pounds, more like 12. Anyway, as much as I really, really, really never wanted to be induced again, apparently I had no choice. I would just love a natural labour experience, like what is that like? What's that like? So off I went. If I remember rightly, I was given a medicine called misoprostol, however you say it, of which I was supposed to receive eight doses throughout the day. But it seems that maybe I'm just quite sensitive to hormone-based medicines because I only needed two doses. During the day, I chatted to a fellow inmate in the bed opposite mine who was there for the same exact thing. We were both induced at the same time in the morning. I can't believe you're watching this. Hope you and your baby are doing well. After the first dose, I wandered down to the supermarket for some snacks. But after the second dose, I couldn't believe that only a few hours earlier I'd been just happily walking about the supermarket. Like last time, I refused an epidural. My panic disorder will not allow me to have a massive needle put in my spine and like a thing left there. I just, uh, no. I had gas and air for a few hours, which was my only pain relief. 
Though it's not super effective and it really makes your head spin, which actually also gives me anxiety. Ooh. I had asked for some other method of pain relief, but they said nothing was available. It wasn't long before the pressure on my pelvis was so intense and painful that I couldn't sit upright, I couldn't sit on the Swiss ball they'd given me, I couldn't stand up. I really didn't want to lie down, I wanted to be upright for gravity to help, but I just, I had to lie down. The first few hours I breathed through the contractions like a fucking boss, until it became impossible to do so. Like, I have a high tolerance for pain and I'm masterful at mental gymnastics, but this is some next level shit. My fellow inmate later said that she could hear me shouting from down the hall. Maternity wards are a funny place, there's a lot of screaming. Here and there you're lying down trying to relax and you just hear like a woman screaming, <laughs> screaming her lungs out just a few doors down. It's like, yep, yep, that's gonna be me. That and like screaming babies everywhere being like, oh my god, existence. Carrying on. My body decided, like last time, to start pushing on its own. The midwives are telling me not to push because the baby hasn't even descended yet. Too bad. I can't help it. Fuck induction. It's so brutal. It wasn't quite as bad as my first birth experience because at least I got wee breaks. A bit of relief between contractions this time. But it lasted longer and it was just so, so painful and exhausting and oh, completely horrible. At that point the gas was taken away and I was completely without pain relief. They say that when you get to the point in labour that you can't do it, it's too unbearable, that that means it's nearly over. The I can't do this moment means it's the end. It came to that point, what felt like the last big push to get the baby out. The I can't do this intolerably, unbearably, I'm thinkably painful moment arrived, accompanied by the sense of relief that it was just about over. Surely the baby's head was out. But I was wrong. The baby hadn't even descended. Its head was miles away. I don't think my cervix was even fully dilated. The baby, which had heretofore always been in the perfect position, had decided to turn around and become slightly transverse. It had flipped around. This means it wasn't breech, it was flipped around like this way. So with its spine against my spine, known as sunny side up, and transverse meaning the baby was lying slightly sideways. Apparently had these things not been the case, the baby would have slipped out like butter, but this baby wasn't fucking moving. I had to lie in this weird sideways position to try and get the baby to turn around. Two hours later, two hours of the I can't do this this unbearable, intolerable pain later, three people are trying to deliver my baby. My giant, fat, at least 10 pound baby. I'll take the head, I'll do the shoulders, I hear them say. They're talking about maybe cutting me, I am not down for that. They say it's now too late for a c-section. They're telling me to push as hard as I can, and as hard as I can isn't good enough. Taking every fibre of my being to summon the strength that just was not enough strength. I'm seeing stars. I feel like passing out. Baby isn't moving. I placed a wee heart rate monitor onto the baby's head. Baby's heart rate is dropping really low. Like, no pressure, but this baby needs to come out right now. Love. Mr. Owl is at my side telling me this in the calmest voice he can do. Baby is not coming out. So they cracked out a ventus, which is a funny word, and a sort of suction device that they put on the top of the baby's head to kind of suck it out. This worked, thank Christ. I'm handed at last a bloody crying wriggling baby and I burst myself into hysterical tears because not only because I'm happy to see my baby, but also because I'm so relieved it's over. Unlike last time, I was actually able to hold my baby for an hour or so while they stitched me up and so forth. The baby had a mark on its head from the Ventus, but thankfully that was gone later that evening. It looked really funny. Anyway, the dangerously giant fat baby I'd been told that I was going to have turned out to be a perfectly average 7 pounds 12 ounces. His blood sugar was fine and mine finally calmed the fuck down too. Thank God. So was the induction necessary? I don't know. I also don't know how three scans in three different places all saw a 98th percentile baby and were all totally wrong. It was 45th percentile in the end and completely healthy and normal. Neither we nor anyone else in my family could figure out who he looks like. I'm just like, is this my baby? Is this 
not sure, but he looks beautiful and is basically the best thing ever. Anyway, what did we name him? I think some of you probably already know because if you come into my live screen, screams, my live screams, live streams, every week or so that I do, um, I have talked about it there. But for those of you who don't know, I had a name in mind since I was about 20 that I'd always wanted to use if I ever had a boy. And as soon as we found out that it was a boy, I talked Mr. Owl into it and he agreed that it was a nice name. I also think he might maybe be the only person on earth with this as a first name. Even though it's a place, I'd originally heard it in a folk song by Scottish duo The Corries. <laughs> I'm cool, I know. So our new baby is named Montrose. His middle name is Cyril, after Mr. Owl's granddad. I like Cyril, I think it's cute. He's sort of named after James Graham, the first Marquis of Montrose. This guy. His story is long and impressive and you can google it if you want to find out. I do call him Monty for short, which I've always liked. People are like, oh, he might get called Monty. I'm like, oh, that's fine. I like that. I love that name. The song that inspired me is called Whores of Cromdale and I'll link it below in the comments if you want to listen to it. I hope you like the name. Tell me what you think of it. He's a lovely wee chap and he's, he's smiling already and it just melts my soul every time he does it. It's so cute. Severine thinks he's the most exciting thing ever she keeps going up to him and going baby baby and like trying to grab him and grab his face poke him yeah so now we are a family of four wow we're like a we're like a whole proper family nice two more people exist because i made them with my body wow weird montrose cyril is my son feels weird to say but i just love him so so much it's ridiculous. Thank you for listening to my story. Childbirth really is absolutely horrible, but it's, you know, a thousand percent worth it. Got to make new good people somehow. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. It makes you cooler. If you happen to have a remarkable birth story yourself, feel free to share it with us in the comments if you want. I mean, I had a kind of medium experience overall. It wasn't like terrible. It wasn't beautiful it was just it could have been worse it could have been better I, I guess it doesn't matter it's done now will i do it again i hope so i really do hope so next time i think i'll take the drugs fuck it i just don't want to do that again it's just so awful i don't i don't want to do that again i want more children but oh ah, oh it's so awful <laughs> anyway take care of yourself be nice to each other stay amazing and i'll see you next time bye <laughs>